President Bush, right after being elected, went to Pittsburgh and talked uh, to a Masonic group there. Uh, I found that quite interesting. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's the spiritual power base for, for the group. From there, um, it spread out, it, uh, of course, to the Atlantic Seaboard and, and then throughout the nation. And the, while the nation is divided into many regions, uh, multiple regions, seven main regions. The East East Coast region has its spiritual power base in Pittsburgh, but the administrative power base is in Alexandria, Virginia. That's where they administer the finances or the day-to-day operations. The West Coast or the West region or West of the Mississippi has its power base in the San Diego area. And that's where um, you spent a lot of time, correct? Yes, yes. I was okay. sent from the Alexandria Council sent me to San Diego. To help them out. Okay, okay um, go ahead. Let's see. Those are the t- the two, of course, main regions, and then each of those regions are divided into subregions. And so then you have your regional council sitting over those and overseeing activities. I mean, if you can think of the structure of a large multinational corporation, that's really how the Illuminati is structured. Then beneath each of the regional councils are your local councils. They call them sister groups or sister, or your local councils, and then you have your local groups under those as well, your, or what they call the sister groups. So um, any major metropolitan city could have anywhere from 5 to 15 groups, depending on the size population base. Now, you were saying that uh, uh, how many people are in this group in America about, from your estimate uh, of knowing a lot of this stuff? Go ahead. Pure Illuminati, I'd say about one percent, give or take. Based so you're, you look, it's a fairly you, uh, big organization, correct? Oh yeah. Now they're, you know, just in the in the uh, their goal basically. Just give us the over, the broad overview goal, and then I want to get into some of these, uh, uh, you know, your role in it, and uh, some of these uh, re, uh, ways that the Illuminati makes money that you learned about. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, when you say to rule the world, it almost sounds laughable, like, yeah, right. You know, I think people get ideas of, like, thinking in the brain, wanting to rule the world. But really, that is their goal. They believe that they are the intelligent leaders, and they believe that the rest of the world are sheep who need, need wise. They see themselves as wise leadership, so they they believe that their goal is, is to rule the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, but at the same time, um, they have got ways of doing this. Their main methods of doing so are behind the scenes. They believe in infiltration of the media, of education, and of government. Those are the three areas, and of the financial system. And they've successfully done quite a bit of all four throughout Europe and the U.S., as well as other countries. Now, you said that they, you're basically the uh, Illuminati is divided into about six or seven different groups, and everyone is born into a group. Can you outline what those groups are? Well, no, it's, it's all one group, but it's just at different levels, you know. Yeah, um, that's what I mean, like the yeah. sciences, the government. Oh, 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 so. well, it's, no, okay, the Illuminati is divided into different branches of learning. And okay. th- these branches include sciences, military, government, leadership, scholarship, and spiritual. Those okay. are the six branches of learning. And while all children need to undergo some training or teaching in, in each area, as they get older, they, they, they begin profiling you from infancy, and they know where your aptitudes and abilities are. Then you are you really go into you, most people specialize in, in one branch or possibly two branches of learning. And you were involved in what branch? I was heavily involved in sciences. And also, uh, to some degree, uh, I did some spiritual as well, but mainly hey, sciences. I, just to backtrack one minute, these 12 disciplines, as a child, you were uh, rigorously trained in this, correct? Yes. Okay. And what were those disciplines? I mean, if just uh, you don't have to go through each one of them, but what primarily were you taught? Um, I think the best way would be to just give you an example of just one one type of training that they do. Okay. And I, I was two years old. I was left in a room for probably a 24-hour period. When you're that age, it's hard to estimate, but it was a long time. I know that the sun did go around <laughs> at least once. You know, it wasn't just like a few hours. And at that age, when you're two and you're left completely alone without food and water, you're terrified. And at the end of the the, the um, time, I was, I was just dying of thirst. I remember I was just 
I, I've never been so thirsty in my entire life. And my mother walked into the room, because a lot of times they have the children, you know, or the parents as train the children at these early ages. And there was a table in the middle of the room, and I'm sitting at it. And she sits at it, and she brings me this cold pitcher of water, and she starts pouring it. I said, Mama, I want a drink of water. And she slapped me out of the chair. Hmm. And I remember crying, and I'm like, and, and, and as I'm crying, and she's drinking the water in front of me, and she leaves. She takes a pitcher of water, and a couple of hours later, she came back in and did the same thing. I said, Mama, Mama, I want water, and she slapped me, I mean, across the room. And after this had happened about three times, luckily I was bright enough that by the third time she came in, I mean, I remember crying silently. I just looked at her. I didn't ask. And after she got up and left with the pitcher, then, then a, man, a man came into the room. He said, you did very well that time. And then he, he gave me a drink of water. Hmm. And, I you know, this, that was part of the learning not to want stage. And looking back on it, rise now as an, an adult, but the purpose of that, that training was to teach me not to recognize my own physiological needs and respond to them, but to look to outside people to tell me what I wanted or needed. Which now, is, you basically, is, uh, you know, you told me that you led kind of a dual life in the Illuminati. I mean, that's basically how they function. They have a, oh, yeah. Yeah. a day job, and then at nighttime you're quite oh, busy yeah. sometimes with the cult's activities, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to get into, uh, if you, you know, you were talking about these groups. I remember I mentioned to you, uh, you were going, you said you had meetings three times a week. And I said, well, what about if I wanted to go and visit? Uh, maybe do a story about them. What uh, what would happen, or how could would I be able to find one of these meetings uh, that were going on where in your area of Escondido? Well, no, because of the security measures. And a, you really don't want to show up unannounced at a meeting if you could get through their security, because chances are you would never make it out alive. Let's just okay. say that a sudden auto accident would occur, and be reported in the papers. Unfortunate accident, man accidentally <laughs> runs into a tree. I mean, I'm serious. I'm not. But the security that they have during group meetings is, is so intense that it would be very difficult. They have uh, security at the one-mile perimeter, the three-mile perimeter, and the five-mile perimeter. They have um, three people assigned, usually one like up in a tree where you can't see them, at the, mm -hmm. at the five-mile perimeter, and then you have one person who's standing who looks like a security guard for the state because he's off the march with these states, which is appropriate, and he's dressed in the uniform. And the third person's standing behind, hidden behind a tree. As cars come through and they come through the gates, because remember, these are, off, these are gated estates. Mm -hmm. you, know, so that, you know, if it's not someone on their approved license checklist, they will stop the car and they say, it's, it's, it's just like they had a military um, installation. They'll say, can I help you? Are you lost? Their goal is to delay the person. Now, if the person's saying, oh, is this blah, 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 and they're, in the, and, they, and they're just asking directions, they'll give them directions, they'll be very pleasant and send them on their way to, to mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be going. But if they are acting as if they want to go further into the state, and this is not an okay person, then the person, they will say, uh, all right, well, let's, 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 you could say he's not expecting you. That's a code word. That tells the person either behind, up in the tree, hidden, or else behind, hidden further back. They radio ahead and they say, unexpected visitor. At that point, everyone would, has been trained to pick up and leave immediately within five minutes. No traces of the activity. Hmm. So this is, this is some of the methods they go through so you don't get caught. I know that uh, you wrote an article about why the cult doesn't get caught, and that's oh, yeah. pretty specific. I mean, you have so much stuff here, and we can't get into it all in two hours. So please pick and choose what you think is most important. But I found that to be interesting, uh, why the cult doesn't get caught. Is there anything in just a brief uh, time you could explain to us uh, that? Well, their security, their money, their influence. Uh, some of these people even own newspapers. Imagine trying to get a... a uh, article published, you know, disclosing. Um, there's a lot of reasons why they don't get caught because that's the first thing people ask. But then my next question is, how many child pornographers are out there that the police have been chasing for years and have never found or caught? Correct. And, the, and, the, and yeah. they're not even members of a secret organization. They're just trying to hide, you know. So mm -hmm. when you now, you, 